First off, the, the poem is called El Ovido. You realize that's not an English word. Those, those of you who may speak Spanish uh, might recognize it. I've got down here um, the uh, translation for the word. It means the forgotten, uh, um, uh, or it actually also means oblivion, right? Um, it suggests this idea of things that are forgotten, um, but uh, oblivion becomes another important meaning of the poem here. And so uh, an oblivion <clears throat> means something that kind of uh, uh, disappears without a trace, right? If we, uh, um, you know, we disappear into oblivion, we don't exist anymore and nobody can find us uh, anymore. Um, and so that's what we mean with with uh, El Ovido, right? Uh, so again, either the, those who are forgotten or oblivion. And if we've titled something like that, then we want to think about what that means, right? Um, we have a title for Battle of the Breaths. What does that mean? Why did it, was it called? Who or what is battling and why breathing? What is that meaning? The breaths are not necessarily literal. They might be metaphorical. So what is this battle between these metaphorical breaths that we are taking? breath is something that is necessary for our life, right? Uh, we stop breathing even for a little bit of time, even for a few minutes, uh, we can potentially die. Uh, and so why would she title uh, that film that? Um, why would we title this poem The Forgotten or Oblivion? Who or what is being forgotten? How is something disappearing off into oblivion? Uh, so those are some interesting questions. Again, I've got some notes uh, um, uh, below. Um, if you ever have questions about anything you see in a poem, make sure that you're looking it up, right? Uh, make sure you understand what all the words mean, because if you don't understand what the words mean, you aren't going to be able to, you're, you're not going to be able to piece together a larger meaning. So uh, that's the title. I've got a lo lot of other marks in here. I'm not going to uh, comment on uh, when I first read through. I'm going to read through it first, and then I'll come back and talk about some of the details and why I've highlighted some of the other things in here. So, El Ovido by Judith Ortiz Kofer. It is a dangerous thing to forget the climate of your birthplace, to choke out the voices of dead relatives when in dreams they call you by your secret name. It is dangerous to spurn the clothes you were born to wear for the sake of fashion. Dangerous to use weapons and sharp instruments you are not familiar with. Dangerous to disdain the plaster saints before which your mother kneels, praying with embarrassing fervor that you survive in the place you have chosen to live. A bare, cold room with no pictures on the walls. A forgetting place where she fears you will die of loneliness and exposure. Jesus Maria y Jose, she says, El Ovido is a dangerous thing. All right, so um, let's go through and think about some of the details that we have in here. And again, what's uh, uh, a couple of things are important. It is not accidental that I'm having this poem uh, right after we did Battle of the Breaths. There are a lot of similarities, both in terms of the ideas, which means kind of we another word we use for that is the theme. Uh, the big ideas that we're trying to get across in this poem uh, are similar to what we had in Battle of the Breaths, and some of the methods in terms of using metaphors are going to be similar. So let's break that down and see where we uh, have that happening. It says, it is a dangerous thing to forget the climate of your birthplace. And I have a note over here, I said, dangerous? In what way? Will you be injured or, or die, right? To forget the climate of your birthplace? Um, uh, why would it be dangerous to forget what the weather was like where you came from? Uh, especially if you don't live anymore, it can't hurt you, right? Um, uh, and w weather can be dangerous again, if, you know, if it's the weather where you actually are, um, but usually only if we're talking about you know, extreme weather or something like that. So it's usually not uh, an issue. If, if you have left the place, it's the climate of your birthplace, assuming that you are living someplace else now, um, how is it dangerous to forget? what that is. Um, if we take that literally, that doesn't make any sense. But if we begin to think that what we're talking about is a metaphor, then it might make more sense. So we can talk about the climate of your birthplace. Again, climate relates to the larger weather patterns, Okay, whether it's generally hot and sticky in a place and um, here's what happens in July versus here's what happens in October. That's the climate of your birthplace. Um, but if we say, wait, maybe, maybe this idea of climate of your birthplace is not necessarily about uh, uh, the weather, but it's about something else. It's about what it feels like to be there. It's about uh, um, 
Again, the, all of these sensations you might have, the sense of the culture of the place, that you're forgetting something about that. And we're use, we might be using climate as a metaphor for that. Again, as I mentioned, when we're looking at Battle of the Breast, one of the things that's potentially confusing is when we're, somebody's a poet is going to be using a metaphor and we don't necessarily recognize it as a metaphor. But if we recognize climate as a metaphor, oh, we're not actually talking about the weather, we're talking about something else, then that be, might begin to make more sense to us. So then she says, it's dangerous to forget the climate of your birthplace. And then she says, to choke out the voices of dead relatives when in dreams they call you by your secret name. So let's think about that. To choke out the voices of dead, it's dangerous to choke out the voices of dead relatives. First of all, um, where is it that, uh, um, uh, how is our dead relatives going to be speaking to us, right? Uh, they come to you in your dreams. So are those real? It's dangerous to ignore those dreams. I mean, uh, usually we do ignore our dreams. We think about the fact that our dreams don't are not based in reality. If, if we really paid too much attention to our dreams, we might do some very strange things. So um, uh, it does make sense to kind of choke out uh, to kind of ignore potentially, she's going to use a stronger word to kind of choke out, kind of violently get rid of these voices of your dead relatives when they call you by your secret name. Well, again, if this we're thinking about this literally, what does all this mean? But if we think about, oh, wait a minute, what we're doing here is we're talking about how we think about your ancestors, right? Your grandparents and, and, and their parents and their parents and, and way on back into the past. Uh, and we're forgetting something about your heritage. And so if we think about these voices of dead relatives as having something to do with our heritage, um, and it is dangerous to choke out the voices that, that tell us something about your heritage. Again, is that may not necessarily be dangerous in the sense of something bad and violent is going to happen to you immediately, but what does that do to who you are as a person if you begin to forget some of that? Think back to what we had in Battle of the Breast, because you can see the same theme developing. That is, in Battle of the Breast, we're talking about she's coming from one culture, she moves to another culture, and there's this conflict between those two. And so, Again, there's a kind of danger there, not in a physical danger, but this kind of mental psychic danger, this sense in which she's going to feel like she doesn't know where she belongs. And so we can think about it's dangerous to choke out those voices of dead relatives when they call you by your secret name right? Uh, who knows your secret name? And again, we don't may not take that literally, but this idea of them potentially knowing something about you that other people in this new place will not know much know about you. Um, again, so just kind of back up, see the similarity here. Judith Ortiz Kofer is Puerto Rican, so she's talking about potentially moving from uh, Puerto Rico to mainland United States. It's clear that Puerto Rico is part of the United States, but um, in some ways it, it, it seems very different. Um, but uh, uh, she's talking about those differences there, what it means to move to some uh, uh, different uh, to different place, and what we might lose when that's going to happen. And she's going to talk about that as being dangerous. So again, that's going to be a metaphor that we're going to have here. It is dangerous to spurn the clothes you're born to wear. Spurn, as it says here, means to reject with disdain, which means to kind of look down on something, right? Um, so it's dangerous to spurn, to reject uh, by looking down on the clothes you were born to wear for the sake of fashion. Again, dangerous to just wear these these clothes you're born to wear. Again, unless we're talking about extreme weather, the, the those clothes don't matter necessarily that much. But we might be talking about this thing metaphorically, and so these clothes that you were born born to wear are going to be part of your culture, and it's dangerous on some level to reject that. And so we can think about all of these. Uh, um, uh, elements from the poem that are going to be doing that. Uh, later on, she's going to talk about um, uh, um, uh, the the dangers to disdain the plaster saints before which your mother kneels praying with embarrassing fervor. So we're going to be talking uh, potentially about those, uh, this uh, woman who the mother's going to be praying. Plaster saints are going to be these kind of uh, little statues uh, that many, pe many people who are Catholic are going to pray to. Uh, and so she is going to be praying to those things and the child is going to be potentially embarrassed. You know, mom is gets so religious about that. I'm kind of embarrassed about what that is. Um, and so if we think about that as being the larger idea here, then we can think about uh, better about um, how uh, all of these elements relate. So you've got a paragraph